Mm, Ivy League education, years of corporate climbing, and now I'm having a meeting about the crab tweet. Mm, this right. is my Good. life. Good luck. Maybe it is a good time to consider selling. We really need to talk about the ranch. The ranch? What about it? <clears throat> it's in trouble. And things are getting really bad. How is that possible? Isn't Superwoman Kate there to save everyone? But can you please come home? Okay, just for a little bit. Hey, girl. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> <I> Mama. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> You're watching Asian, and you can watch my new movie, Christmas at the Ranch, at telefilms.com. Thanks. I feel like that's a trick question because I have a holiday movie coming out. Father of the Bride Part 2. <laughs> it's not at all a holiday movie, but it brings back memories of holidays with my family. Favorite ship that is not straight. I feel like I have to support my friend Dom, who is on Winona Earp, um, who was in the first rom-com with me. But I know a lot of people ship her couple because they have like crazy fan conventions where um, they meet them and it's it's this big affair. But I, yeah, I, I support Dom. And she's recently um, been exploring her identity. So I want to support her. Best holiday moment. I feel like I haven't had many holidays. <laughs> this isn't really a holiday, but back in the day before COVID, my family would get together um, at my, we call them Papa and Gung Gung, which is my Chinese grandparents. And it was sort of this big dinner where anybody who had anyone who was, you know, in Los Angeles without their families could just come to dinner. So we've had some really great dinners where we've had friends of cousins come and uh, people drop by and that's just been really fun because normally it's a pretty intimate family affair and it's nice to include other people and have them witness our crazy family moments. <laughs> of course, I have to find myself a holiday now. <laughs> holiday romance is 100%. <laughs> All I want for the holidays this year is R. <laughs> um, I mean, it sounds super cheesy, but I want to spend it with my family and I want to go on an, a fun trip. I love going on vacation, so I want to go on a fun trip with my family. So here are the actual questions. <laughs> Um, so what was it like working with Amanda Rigetti? Were you a fan of her from The Mentalist? I had actually seen The Mentalist not in order, but sporadically over the years. Um, and I didn't really place it that she, you know, sometimes when you work with people, you don't place it like, oh, that's that person. Um, it was amazing to work with her, honestly. I, we were just texting the other day and I just thanked her for being such a calming, grounding presence for me during the film. Um, shooting during COVID was kind of crazy. And I, I basically said, I'm, I'm really glad that I had you. So it was, it was great. She's, I mean, learning, I learned a lot from her. She's by far the most experienced um, actor I've worked with, it, you know, as like a love interest. And it was just really fascinating to watch her work. It was awesome to, you know, I would ask her certain things and she'd be so generous with sharing advice. Um, and now, yeah, like, you know, like I said, we were texting the day and I was just really grateful that I had her with me during this experience. Do you have any behind the scenes stuff that you'd like to share about like how you guys hung out and like to build that connection and that chemistry on screen? She's like an actual horseback rider. She's ridden horses in The Mentalist, but she's an actual equestrian. So she has experience with horses and in this film, we rode horses and they actually were not show horses. They were horses that had actually lived on the property that we were filming. So these horses were basically very comfortable in the space. However, it was winter in Nashville. It was icy. 
And so Amanda gave me some really good tips on just how to bond with my horse. She would go and feed her horse, whose name was Molly. And Molly was actually very pregnant. So her horse in the film is very pregnant. And my horse lady is very old and they're a bonded pair. So we had some really interesting <laughs> adventures with the horses because they just didn't want to do what we told them to do because they were so bonded together. And um, Amanda's horse went around the corner um, she wasn't riding the horse at the time, but she was kind of giving me tips on how to ride the horse and her, the horse she was riding, Molly went around the corner and my horse lady freaked out and started cantering. <laughs> and I, I had not done, I mean, I'm not like an equestrian. Um, I've ridden horses before, but I haven't like cantered like this. And Kristen, the director basically said she was yelling cause she said, Oh, I think we want to do a cantering scene. And I said, uh, okay, well, I don't really know how to canter. So <laughs> let's see if that works out. And as Lady was cantering around the corner after Molly, my cowboy hat was like, Doing! it like went up and did like a roll in the air. I hear Kristen just yell, that's cantering. <laughs> and apparently the last thing she heard from me was, I know. And I just was holding on for dear life. But Amanda was so supportive after that. She was like, you did great. You held on. Like that's all anybody could have asked for. Um, so we had some interesting like horseback riding experiences and she gave great advice on and off camera for the horses and just how to bond with them and everything. Um, but she's an actual equestrian, which is really cool. Uh, I don't know is that how to phrase this question, but with last year's happiest season, how do you feel about like the normalization of love stories between women? That's interesting. Um, so the film that I had done with the director, Kristen Baker prior, um, actually came out before Happiest Season and um, Happiest Season definitely was more you know like a mainstream story um I watched it I thought it was adorable we were talking about how Happiest Season tended to be more of like a coming out story and what we felt we wanted to do and why I love shooting with Kristen the director on her stories is you know I think we just wanted to highlight stories of people living their lives who also happen to be queer. And it's not about coming out. It's not necessarily highlighting that part of their life as the central aspect of the story. It's, it's a love story that you would see on Hallmark or Lifetime or any other channel that just happens to feature a same-sex couple. It's not about that as the central pulling point of the story. It's saying, hey, people who are in same-sex relationships can have stories that are love stories just the same as heterosexual couples. So um, I guess in comparison to Happiest Season, which I felt like was more of a coming out story, um, I, I think what we maybe as far as me incorporating that into my character is more of a complementary part of of telling stories and putting them out there into mainstream media you know um happy seasons more of coming out story what we're making is is complementing that i think but yeah i would say as far as um character work i i think the more the merrier as far as these stories are concerned and they each have a role within the landscape um, and there's enough space for all of them. It's so rare to see like happy love stories between women. So I guess that was the whole mm -hmm. thing that stood out for me for Christmas at the ranch. Wouldn't you yeah. think so? Yeah, and, and to address the point that I forgot to address about the being an Asian woman, um, I think it's really cool because the casting director, shout out to Julie Gale, she's very creative in how she casts. And she says, why can't it be a white grandmother, Lindsay Wagner? Why can't it be a mixed family? There's no reason why it, it shouldn't be, or it has to be one way or the other. And so I, I give her a lot of credit for being really um, open with casting, um, casting Archie as my brother and sort of a ranch role, which he said he had never played. Um, and he actually in real life has, you know, a mixed family. And I come from, you know, my mom's side is, is Chinese. And so it was just really cool also to, to throw that representation in and to play someone whose Mima is Lindsay Wagner. Like I never thought I'd have that opportunity um, in a mixed family. So that, that was really cool.
Um, and then just my last question for you is speaking of mixed families um, and identifying as multi-ethnic, do you identify as either one or more or the other? Because I mean, when I ask the Christmas question, I'm not sure if you celebrate Christmas, but you know, like how, how does that work out for the holidays and just being the blended family? It's actually Hanukkah right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wanted to say. <laughs> um, I celebrate all of it, but I, um, I would say I grew up most Mostly uh, surrounded, not necessarily identifying with, because I my mom's side is very traditional. So I grew up in a very traditional Asian sense on my mom's side, and on my dad's side, um, you know, mixed Jewish, European mix. So we did a lot of a lot of blending of holidays. Um, and I would say I grew up in primarily, a, I guess, a less Asian environment socially, just because that wasn't really the landscape of like the schools that I went to. So, but my family was dominated by Asian culture. And as I grew up and into my own skin, identifying with my Asian side socially was a conscious choice that I've made because I'm so proud of my heritage. And I ended up doing this Los Angeles Chinatown after I graduated from college as a conscious effort to want to get to know my heritage on a more social level with people in my generation, because I was very familiar with my Papa and Gogong's generation and, you know, just they observe a lot of traditions and my family, but I wasn't quite sure how other people outside of my family dealt with their Asian-ness. And that was something that I just became so like almost obsessed with and so proud of. And so now as an adult, I find that I, I feel like I identify, maybe I'm just making up for lost time, but I identify very almost more so with my Asian side um, because it's something that I've chosen and that I've chosen to learn about and participate in. Um, and I just see that it's just such a rich and vibrant part of my heritage that I'm just really proud of it. Um, and not to mention my dad, who's white as can be, um, has gotten pretty Asian over the years too, just because of my family. And like, he can't eat with a fork anymore. Like every, he has, he literally has to use chopsticks for every meal. Um, but I would say be, just because I have such a strong family, um, it's, it's just such a part of my life. So while I do identify with both, I think I've, I've really enjoyed getting to know my Asian heritage more as an adult, for sure. And my mom the other day, my mom, she's an immigrant. She said, yeah, I feel like you're getting more and more Asian. It's weird. Because <laughs> I'm just like, my mannerisms. I'm hanging out with my grandparents. <laughs> my gong gong actually passed away at the beginning of COVID. Um, but, you know, I've been hanging out with my papa a lot. I, my mom. So we're all just becoming, um, I think, like the same person. <laughs> um, but I love, I love being Asian and I'm really proud of it. Let's just stay out of my way. There's a lot of work to do, and I don't have time to babysit. Okay, I'll make sure she stays out of your way. Listen, I don't want to get all Mariah Carey on you or whatever, but all I want for Christmas this year is something to share it with. I just asked Santa Claus for a girlfriend. Yeah, I'm officially losing it. Want to help up? I can get on a buckboard okay. by myself. Okay. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> The trailer shifted. Yeah, they do that sometimes. So that's it. You're just gonna give up. Look, I have to make sure that my grandma has enough to retire and selling will make that happen. We should have done the Grinch theme again this year. We could have just used you. So we're gonna take your advice and sell to Bert. You came back. Just swooping in at the very last second to save the day. 